glad to be here today. Glad you're all here to share this with us. I'm very proud of all of our members here. Everybody has worked so hard for this. We've been working since October for this. And it's from our heart to yours. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I forgot, like I always do sometimes, is to put the actual title of the cantata in the book. In the, <laughs> it's Hark the Angels Sing. Okay. Hark the Angels Sing. It's a story from the angel's point of view as to the birth of their Christ. And not only is it a story of the birth of their Christ, it's a story of his death and the story of his resurrection. It goes to the whole thing. And the pastor said, that's kind of nice. We don't leave him in the manger. But one thing I'd like to say is, you know, I, I sang a song the first Sabbath of this month. And Emily was my pianist, and she played. And it was a rather very nice arrangement that she played. And so at the end, somebody came up to me and said, you know, it's a nice song, Bob, but Emily did most of the work. <laughs> <laughs> and I really appreciate that, because it brings to home, without our pianist, this would not be possible. And we're very thankful for Emily, and we're thankful for everybody that's contributed. So now we give you, Hark the Angels Sing. Thank you. 
It had seemed like an eternity already to us from the beginning of time. God had planned to reach out his greatest creation, mankind. And here in heaven, all of us angels had waited patiently for the Father to reveal that plan. We'd heard the prophets speak of God sending his son to earth. They had said he would be born in the town of Bethlehem. We had ideas of what he might be like, and we were getting anxious to see him. Finally, the Father gathered all the heavenly beings together. Watch, he said, watch, for what you've been waiting for will soon be revealed. to be a part in this announcement. Perhaps God would dispatch our glorious choir. Or maybe we would form a huge luminous spectacle in the sky that all of Israel would see. yet. First, one of our own. Only one angel was sent to a young girl. And not in Bethlehem of Judea, as we had expected. Gabriel got the assignment to tell a young virgin girl in Nazareth of Galilee that she would be the mother of the Savior of the world. It was a surprise to her. It was a surprise to us all. Be still my heart, how can this be? 
wondered what would happen to Joseph, her betrothed, when he heard the news. He was a good man and a righteous man. He loved Mary, but what should he do? If he married her, he would shame his family. If he divorced her, it would disgrace her. Would he reject her? Would he ever understand? Gabriel came to Joseph in a dream with a message that would answer these questions. given the privilege of telling this news to the young couple, but the rest of us had to wait. We could say nothing. But we could see how Bethlehem would fit into the picture. We continued to watch as the whole plan unfolded. According to this decree from Caesar, Joseph and Mary would have to travel down from Galilee to the country called Judea, to the city of David, better known as Bethlehem. Joseph's ancestors were from, you guessed it, Bethlehem. Even though the journey was long, the timing was perfect, of course. The child Mary was carrying and was due any day. They would travel this long road to fulfill the law, but it would also fulfill the prophecies about his birth. The Messiah would be born a Nazarene, they had said, but he would be born in Bethlehem. Joseph traveled for perhaps three or four days. We were sent from heaven to guard them, to keep them safe on their journey. But instead of finding a warm, clean place to stay, they found that all the inns were full, no room for them anywhere. An innkeeper offered his stable for the night, and they graciously accepted. 
If the citizens of Bethlehem had only known who was to be born that night, I'm sure they would have found some arrangements. I wanted to tell them, but we were not allowed. We were silenced. I can't help but wonder, though, what would have happened if they had only known the Messiah had come? The child was born right there in the stable. He is born the divine Christ child. We wanted to shout it to the whole world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. But instead of telling the whole world the good news, we were sent to the countryside. 
to a band of shepherds who were totally unaware of what had just happened. We appeared to them. Needless to say, they were surprised. Surprised? We almost scared them to death. shepherds left immediately and did as we told them. When they arrived, they found Mary and Joseph. And they found the baby wrapped in cloths, lying there in a feeding trough. It was the sweetest sight ever. Those weathered old shepherds took turns, gently holding the little child. commanded the shepherds to go out and tell what they'd seen that night. No, the news just sort of overflowed. 
They were so touched by the tiny Messiah that they had to tell everyone they saw. An army of angels had been sent back to heaven, so the good news about Jesus had to be broadcast by the mortals. And the word spread quickly. has been sent on other missions, but nothing like that night. And that was the last time we were deployed to earth in such a way. But we did watch over the child as he grew strong and wise. We saw him grow to be a man. We saw him use his heavenly powers to heal and to raise the dead. We heard him speak and teach and sing. But just when he was beginning to make a difference, it seemed, he was arrested and executed like a criminal. He even had to be buried in a borrowed tomb. However, on the third day, an angel was permitted to speak again, sent to his tomb to tell the best news of all. This angel proclaimed that Jesus had risen from the dead. That was the best news of all. Jesus, the Messiah, had fulfilled yet another prophecy and the Father's plan to save his people. By Christ's death and resurrection, the gate between heaven and earth is open. Through faith, man can be reconciled to his holiness, almighty God. The first time he came, his throne was a feeding trough. His scepter was a piece of straw. His processional was the mooing of cattle. And his court was a band of shepherds. But when he comes again, the scene will be different. We will announce him again, but this time the whole world will see him and recognize him as King of King and Lord of Lords.
Victoria a benediction. Roger's going to help me out here. Uh, Bob has done these events for <clears throat> a long time, a long time, and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, this is a small token of our appreciation to you, Bob. There's uh, almost as many flowers in there as you've done this for years. Amen. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. And uh, we're, we're kind of cheap. We've wrapped your payment in a, in a chocolate bar. <laughs> yes. And Emily, what a wonderful job on the piano. Amen. We thank you so much. Thank you for coming, and uh, Beth has our benediction. Let's bow our heads. Wow, Father, thank you for not staying in the manger. Thank you for the promise of your soon return. Help us to stay faithful, help us to forgive, and to love one another. And that starts with our families, Lord. It's Christmas time. Help us to give the best gift of all to each other. To say I forgive you, to say I'm sorry, to say I love you to one another. Thank you, Father, for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>